Yeah, well, let's get going on this. <laughs> Welcome to physics in the air. Different voice. Can you see me? Are you the Raiders? Joey and the Raiders here, coming at you. We're going to put in a good shift today. Lots of notes. You guys are going to hate it. We talked about motion. You need a reference point to actually meaningfully say you are or are not in motion. And we used the example yesterday that sitting here on my butt in my chair, I could argue that I'm not in motion. And I could also be correct in saying that I am in motion. It depends on the reference point. With respect to the Earth's surface, I am not in motion sitting here. And same with you. With respect to the solar system, the sun, I am in motion. I'm zipping around the sun. I, with, and you can take other things with respect to the planet Pluto, with respect to, you know, anyway, just face your own observing. Reference, okay? For the most part, that's pretty easy. What gets tricky is, I'm, let's say, a car, but not just a car. Let's say there's a motorhome and you're actually like walking around in the motorhome right? as a drive. I don't think you're allowed to. I think, do you guys know anyone have a motorhome? Are you allowed to like be lounging around in the back? <laughs> I think so. Yeah, they must. Because usually there's only two front seats and then they must have something. Yeah. Terrible. The seatbelt laws came in when I was a kid, and I was really ticked because I'm recording. And here's why. Because we had a station wagon. I didn't know we had back seats because the station wagon, you guys know what those are? Because they don't make them much anymore. And we had our flat, our seats flattened all the time because we could roll around on this, like we had this foamy thing, kind of a mattress in the back. And I was like, oh, my stomach hurts. I can't wear seat belts. They're too tight. And all that stuff like this one, we had to start wearing them. Anyway, that was the age of fun. But here's what I'm saying is it gets, and I'm going to just do this here, do a little thought experiment. Let's consider you're in a motorhome. I'm just drawing the fault. There you are. Now this is driving down the highway. Okay. With respect to the Earth, right now we're parked. No problems, right? With respect to the Earth, I'm moving. Motorhome still. I'm in motion, though, right? Right? Then this motorhome gears up. Start rolling down the highway. Let's see which one is. Am I in motion, would you argue? You're traveling at a steady speed. So and let's say that it's a super quiet motorhome. Can you even tell if you're in motion or not? No. So if you had, let's say this is the back of a semi, actually, that'd be noisy. But it, you know what I'm saying? Like this is just no windows and stuff like that. Could you tell if you're in motion or not? Not really, without observing the outside thing. It'd be tough, right? Okay. Let's say that you're really tough. Are you in motion or not? Like, in that case, you are, but you might not even be able to detect it. Because when do you feel you're in motion? You know this intuitively when you were a little kid. Did you ever fall asleep on the way home? Let's say you were in Yorkton or somewhere out of town, Moose Jaw or something like this, because you're at vanity school or something. You're driving back. You're not driving. You fall asleep. When do you wake up usually when you were a little kid and you fell asleep in the back seat? Because ah, you're slowing down. You're accelerating. Decelerating isn't really a word. It's a negative term. When you're in steady motion, sure, you hear the tires on. You don't really feel the motion, right? Saying is that the speed is constant. It's hard to tell us we're in motion with respect to the Earth. That's my reference. Now, here's my question What if the walkable seats 
you're just very slowly driving this motor. Now let's just say it's only two meters per second. This is a really long motor. At the same time, you're walking this way two meters per second. You could argue that you're in motion, and you could argue that you're not in motion. Right? Right? So motorhome's going this way. At the same time, I'm going this way. Lost the time. Okay, follow what I'm saying? It's like being on conveyor belt. Yeah, like on a conveyor belt or on a... You ever walk backwards on an escalator? You sort of stay in the same spot if you get the right speed. That's what you're doing. Are you in motion or not? Okay, which one are you saying? Yeah, which one? Right. You're in motion. It's like defining the laws of physics. I'm not defining the laws of physics. I'm just talking about reference. Which reference point are you in motion? With respect to what reference point? Because I'll say yes, and I'll say yes until he says no. Yes, you're correct. Mm -hmm. If you could tell me the reference point that you were in motion. Somebody help out. The vehicle's going to the left, and Andrew's going to explain why this person walked. Yeah. Answer both questions. Perfect. To the earth, at a stand. That is, it's actually easier to see, but I wanted a situation where you actually can't see outside the window. If you ever, in airports, they have those horizontal escalators. I wouldn't call them escalators. They're not escalators. Horizontal people movers or whatever, right? The walkways? They, they just... The walkways. Yeah, the walkways, but they're, they're like an escalator. They're going... And if you walk backwards, you can see, you can see the spot beside you on the wall that you're in the same spot. So, with respect to the earth, you're not moving, but with respect to the surface of the walkway, you are moving. Same kind of idea here. Just throwing these things out there. The things we've got to think about relative to what? Okay, next. Uniform and non-uniform motion. Lots of stuff here. I'll shut up for a minute. You guys are going to write it down, then I'll chat it up too much. You guys know this. Pause the video so that you can pause it and copy it down if you're not here. I'll chat it up a little bit. The word uniform outside of this context, outside of physics, that would be if we're wearing a uniform, everyone's the same, right? So uniform motion, the same motion every second. Non-uniform. That's how we're dressed, non-uniformly. Right? It's not the same. Uniform motion, though, then, so in physics. An example would be a cruise control, 100 kilometers per hour, but you're going in a straight line, you're not changing direction. So 100 kilometers per hour and north. Not changing. Uniform motion, then, has constant speed and direction. Direction is important. If you're on a uh, circular racetrack, and you're going 30 kilometers per hour all the way around. That's not uniform motion. Non-uniform motion has either the speed or the direction change. And when you change speed and when you change direction, you get a sensation. Pardon me. Do you know? Sorry, I'm not really distracted. I am. I don't care. I'm distracted. You have a sensation. Now let's think about cars. You're traveling, and we've already talked a little bit. You're traveling at a steady speed in a straight line. You can't feel, other than the car, you can see out the window that you're moving. But you can't feel a lot. So let's think about this. We had already mentioned that when you were little, you'd wake up when you start slowing down for corners. Okay. So you can feel, and let, let's think of the extreme, you slammed on the brakes because you see a deer on the highway. You don't hit it over. But you slam on the brakes. You know what that feeling is like, right? Now, most of us don't have really awesome cars. Maybe some do, I don't care. But you can imagine just a little bit of the feeling. If you just hammer on the gas because you're not in the school zone, nobody's around and it's safe to do so, 
you can feel that push back in your seat, right? You can imagine that. They call it acceleration, by the way, that feel. Now, as far as changing direction but not changing speed, let's say you keep your speed steady at a safe speed, 30 kilometers per hour, but you're turning in a circle. Will you feel some sensation? Think of going to the exhibition or someplace on ride. You're going to steady speed. You're going around in a circle. How do you, what do you feel? Yeah. Feel that, and it's called a centrifugal force. It's a position. But yeah, you get that feeling that you're being pushed inside. And think about that. Like, I'm turning this way in my, I feel like in my seat, it's a really quick turn. I'm going to feel that push, right? You guys know it? So, it is actually the same, similar feeling to when you're stopping fast or else you're accelerating, starting, increasing your speed. And it actually is a form of acceleration when you're changing direction. Okay? Dominic, or was I just a... Okay. That's what I was just telling you. When you're going around a corner, even at a steady cruise control, but you're going around a corner. You ever go, um, you know, the ring road at the end of Albert Street, stuff like this, the, the curl that you take? You take that too fast, you're going to feel that push out to the side. And that's too fast, it's like 70. It is. And there's one on the way. Sometimes I debate whether I should slow down on the way to Moose Jaw. There's one curve thing that you guys know what I'm talking about if you go to Moose Jaw. I feel like I should slow down because I can feel that slight push to the side. And I don't usually slow down, but if it's icy, I do. Anyway, Donna. No, because gravity would pull me down. This is the acceleration. We'll get into that force stuff later. Centrifugal force, etc. Now, what did I have here? Oh, that's just that's my little picture show. Can I get rid of this page? I think you, can think that. you do think so, don't you? Delete page. Thank you. Okay, now we got some other words. So, scalars. Scalar quantities have a magnitude. That's a number measurement, and a unit. No direction involved. So I was using the word velocity if it has direction. Otherwise, if it has no direction, I say speed. Speed is the common word, too. 100 kilometers per hour. But some things can't even have direction. If you're 22 kilograms in mass, not you, because that's pretty light, but you have But there's no such thing as 22 kilograms north. Yes? Magnitude is the number measure. That's what it is a simple way to say. Magnitude is the size. Okay? Magnitude. Magnificent. Okay, copy that down and we're moving on right away. Okay, so scalars don't have directions involved. Vector quantities have magnitude and direction. And that same speed, when I just add west, north, east, south, whatever, becomes a velocity. We use the word velocity to move directions apart. And then we're going to get into some drawing to scale. The length of the vector corresponds to the magnitude of the size. And an arrow gives the direction up, down, left, right, north, south. Pause the video because you could just pause the video and jot down. The... So, you guys have this down. Now, I'm going to Use my little ruler here. So, you guys are going to talk about this example to scale. Five centimeters equals 100 kilometers in my scale here. I don't think I've changed any of that. Five centimeters equals 100 kilometers. Okay. Like, you don't need to use a ruler here, but just, I'm giving an example, but just draw something reasonable. Well, if I drew something two and a half centimeters, like I did right here, 
the same, exactly. Like that's the same ratio. So that your sketch is represented, it's drawn to scale. But why? Well, I just, as long as I declare a scale and stay consistent with that 5 to 100 ratio. Oh, the ratio is zero scale. Yeah, I just invented a scale that would fit on the paper for. You should say that next time. I just did now. You clarified and it's good for everyone. Then there's a word. So, you understand the, the magnitude, the longer it is, the bigger the number, and the direction, up and down. The direction, left to right, that's east. The arrow says which direction you're heading. And because it's shorter, this one represents 50 as opposed to 100. You guys are sketching these. You will do careful sketches eventually. Yeah. I can. I'm a scroll. This is a vector measurement drawn to scale. Example. <laughs> Pause again. Uh, just slip it up, and there's something called collinear vectors. They're on the same, in the same line. Collinear. Is that it? Right. Well, I'll pause this. So, some examples of collinear vectors. I guess I'll follow the screen, yeah. I've got I wouldn't need to do that. I can draw them quick. This would be collinear with this. This would also be collinear. So it's in the same line even though it's left to the right. Guess what though? This is collinear as well. It's going left. It might be a little bit south. We're going to find out that vectors are movable. We'll, we'll see how. But. Okay. So just draw two or three random, not random, in the same line for collinear vectors. Then we're good. You got it. You got it intuitive. Okay. I'm going to flip the page because it's just, it's not. I'm going to draw see what I'm going to draw. Yep. You don't have to write down the ruler, but you have to write this down. Now, I have the arrows underneath there because I'm going to grab them to make this work. You guys take a second here to draw down. Determine the sum of the following. Very easy math, but we want to do it visually with arrows. I'm going to pause the video for it. Um, back to this one. So to draw this, now I said this is, I'm giving you an easy problem because I know if I, let's just say you walked or drove 20 kilometers north and went backwards 20 kilometers south, I know that I'm now 8 from the sun. And then I went 14 kilometers north, it ended up 22. Really? You guys follow what I'm saying? I can do this in my head without a problem. But we want to build the skill. How do we represent? Okay. If we're 20 kilometers north. What's that? Oh, that. So what I'm going to do is. So I'm going to. I'm going to take it. I'm going to use the scale of. 10 to 1, 10 centimeters to, I said 10 to 1, 10 to 20. So, that's, I'm going to use a 1 to 2 ratio. Yes. This will fit. No, it won't. I'm going to go with 5. Sorry. 5 to 20. You guys follow me? Is that ratio? 40. 5 centimeters on my scale will represent 20 kilometers. I'm going to write that down. Always declare what scale you're using. I'm using 5 centimeters equals 20 
along. I can reduce that because I know how to reduce that. One, one centimeter, four. It's a one to four. So, you see what I did? I used the ruler and I can draw it. You guys can pretend to use the ruler because I think you, this is simple enough. Now, I take the other one. Color coding. Using that one to four ratio, what should my 12 kilometer vector be length was? Twelve to four. <coughs> so I'm gonna just take this in there. Okay, I can do this quite quickly. Collinear, we'll add them up out, right? I can move these around. You would don't draw them. And S should be seven and a half, about a half. I'm having as much three and a half. Make sense? addition by drawing. Make your life easy if you want. You can put them head to tail like that. Do I have to go? Here's what I do. Okay, I'm going to just put this. I'm going to do this one. You guys see what I just did, right? So I went 20 kilometers. This is my journey, basically. I took it as a stride. 20 kilometers, zipped backwards and then went forward. I ended up 22 kilometers from the start. Does that make sense what I did? I can see that with the addition. Would it matter if I'm doing vector addition if I get it in the same order? Is that the same ending point as? And then we're going to see how. Clone all of these. What I want to say is, what if I went in a different order? I went to 20 kilometers, followed by the 14, then went back. They're not lining these up correctly. What do you notice about that? It's the same. I could start with the 14, then add the 20, and then subtract the 12. All I'm trying to say is, with vector addition, it makes sense to add the heads and tails out in different ways. It's okay. You still get the same answer. Some people intuitively want to do it the top way. Some people want to do it the bottom way. That doesn't matter. You end up with the same. I still haven't got the answer. The answer vector that I'm going to take it right now. And I'm going to make it a different color. Uh, let's go with, uh, I don't know, is this blue? Let's go with it. Purple? I don't care. Whatever. Really and truly, the end result is that you started here and you ended up here. Right? Whether I do it this way or this way, it's the same result and success. Now, I'm not going to keep it over top the way I showed it, but that's how I draw it. The result is the absolute starting point to the absolute ending point. We call that the result and success. I have it. The answer is called the result and success. I guess to be consistent with that, I'm going to change the color. So I'll say, I'll give you 
give you a couple of x's, I'll say find the result. That means add it up. Very well. Typically, though, know, you have it in the drawing itself. Since these are collinear vectors, so it overlaps so much. That's how you would usually present. Yeah. Not okay. Use a ruler, and I think you can use it. I'm going to pause this while you just jot that last thing down, and then we're going to. Geometry meets science. Two forces pull on a post to drag it out of the ground, as shown in the diagram. What is the resultant force? As you're jotting that down, I'm going to get out, because I doubt many people have a protractor with. Just jot this down, I'm just recording that. Jot this down. Two forces pull on a post to drag it out of the ground, as shown. What's the resultant force? Now, do this as a sketch. We're going to do a careful sketch with the rulers in a few minutes. Yeah. Well, we've got protractors, we've got rulers. It's not easy to solve. Now, do you guys understand this idea? Maybe you got ropes involved. I'm pulling this way, you're pulling this way. We haven't heard about Newton, but it's a way to measure a force. Obviously, the guy who's going 140 newtons a little harder than the 120. Don't worry about me, you'll learn about it. What it's like. But I'm pulling with a rope. They're pulling with a rope. The post should fall over somewhere in between, right? Which direction will it pull? Well, the mass, the drawing this way is exactly what's happening. But I think vectors are transformable. What we're going to do is draw head to toe like that with a careful method. Then you'll be able to say, oh, that's the result. That's the direction that it comes in. Do I not understand what the problem is? Even though that's the physical situation, it's better to draw it like that. Now, I pre measured this much. To the 120, probably I used the scale, and I don't know if it'll work for you guys. It's been a while, but the scale. I did use six. Six to 120. The scale I use. Take your scale though. I think six centimeters would work quite well for you guys too. I'm going with six centimeters, 120. And you're carefully driving that. Not when you don't need a project where you just draw it straight up. Now, how I said your goal is to put head to toe. So hopefully you're remembering that you might not. Because the next one's going to go like this. If you didn't, though, don't worry. You can also get the same resultant. This is the resultant. If you did the head of the same direction to down here. Okay? You follow what I'm saying? If you drew it the other way around, it'll still be the same result. Just a straight line. I'm using the 6 to 120. That means my 140, when I draw it, I want it to be 7. I can do this in my head. If you can't, you can start. If I just cut it in half and take off the zero, it's really quite a bit. But I pre done My angle. But how would you figure that out? Because I said 45 degrees northeast. I'm going to get rid of the river. So I would, and you are going to use that protractor to get 45 degrees. Said though, if you have that same thing measured, but you're drawing, you, you started the first vector too high and you're going to run into your word, you could put that and still get the same answer. Draw just head to toe. 
it doesn't matter if you put it at the top or the bottom of the other one. It kind of has a different meaning. Somewhere in there. Yeah. 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 It's a really good trivia. I'm waiting for you guys to measure out 45 degrees just before I do the weather. Put it at the top to the bottom. Heads and tails is all you need. What you want to do is, with your ruler then, join the head and the tail right here. Except with the, like I did with mine previously, right? I have it done already, so I'm going to move this in. Got to tweak it a little bit. There we go. Now, I get the same answer, I, and I'm convinced of this, when I go like this. Oh. It didn't, that's what I'm trying to show. Doesn't matter. I could do it this way. I still get the same result. I'm just using a different color so the two of them are the same. Okay? Now, force is acting on that. What is the resultant force? The way to answer this is to use the ruler. Right? And your sketches will be decimally out with mine probably. I have 10 centimeters. I need to do a little tick mark on that. And then measure the other centimeters. Uh, okay. I'm going to just put a red tick mark right there at 10. And then I'm going to measure the 11, 12 part. I'm going to 12.1 for mine. Uh, maybe not. Well, I don't know what you guys have. That's the centimeters. That's not the actual. What are you guys getting? You getting 13? What are you? Delaware. I don't think I'd be one for Delaware. 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 Anybody else who uses a scale, what is the measurement you're getting? Like you should be like within 12, give or take. What do you get? You get 12 on the nose. Okay. Well, let's just see. 12.4 Probably. So it should be good. So I'm going to write down over here. So that's 12 centimeters. Which, if that's 6 centimeters at 120 newtons, can we just do this in our head? If 6 centimeters is 120, 12 centimeters would represent? You just multiply that 20. Right? You couldn't do it. If it was something like, if it was 13.8 or something like that, you'd multiply by 20. I'm going to write beside head that this is 240 and per newton. Then I need a direction. And that's the last thing. Uh, typically, we use north as the zero. That's why I have my code back. And I'm looking at, I think that's 24 degrees. Always go with north or south first. And it's more north, it's not going south, it's going up. And then 24 degrees towards the east. That's how we report it. The north south measurement, and then how many degrees are they going east or west? And then you're done for now. That's an example. Thank you for paying attention. And you guys don't get up here. Come on.